What's going on everybody and welcome to my page. I'm your host, the Puerto Rican Conservative, and as everybody knows, I like to bring you guys a different topic every week, or well, at least every few days, every two or three days. Today I wanted to talk about something called the the dangers of shorthand um, thinkers, the, the culture of shorthand thoughts. This is in reference to, of course, uh, a cultural extension of ideological subversion. Ideological subversion was uh, a moral or psychological war that was declared on the United States of America by Eastern Europe in the form of active measure. Active measure, or as uh, Yuri Bezmenov, which was the former KGB agent that came to the United States in the 1980s and shared what was being done to America, uh, claimed that it is. Ideological subversion is basically, in layman's terms, the dumbing down of America, or the oversimplification of America to bring them to a point where they can no longer assimilate to or relate to sophisticated information. Ideological subversion uh, comes in three stages, I mean in four stages, sorry about that. The first stage being demoralization, which is basically uh, to re-indoctrinate or re-educate an entire generation in Marxist ideology. Now, as everybody knows, it only takes 17 to 20 years in order to completely subvert or condition or indoctrinate a human child into whatever ideologies or philosophies you want them to uh, adopt. We know this to be a fact because of the simple reason that academia, which is one of the four cornerstones being attacked or being weaponized using ideological subversion, uh, only goes from K or kindergarten all the way up to the 12th grade, which means that they have 12 years of of social engineering and 12 years of ideological reindoctrination before the child is completely subverted and they can change that child to appease the agenda of, of, of Eastern Europe, which is to have them hate America. This is going on presently and a lot of people don't realize it. This is being done because of the dumbing down of America, not because of anything else. Now, demoralization as defined in context is uh, context warfare, a national security and law enforcement, a process in psychological warfare with the objective to erode morale among enemy combatants. So what they do is that they make you morally deteriorate. Um, that way they can encourage you to retreat or surrender your ideological beliefs. This is a psychological mechanism that is utilized um, in psychological wars throughout the world. Historically, according to Marxist Leninist ideology known as historical materialism. Now, presently now in America, there are Transparent form of Marxism being taught in schools. One of them is known as the critical race theory, which I spoke about recently and speaks about basically uh, claiming that black societal problems are an extension of the, the societal ideas and cultures which uh, many African-American scholars believe to be an extension uh, culturally of white supremacy. So they're presently teaching this in school. And because they're teaching this in school, this is dangerous because this is one of the, the tactics of Marxist-Leninism is to divide utilizing an idea known as class conflict or uh, race conflict or... Uh, Marxist class conflict, which is one of the most powerful sociological explanations of social conflict 
is that of Karl Marx, the founder of Marxism, who posited a class struggle between proletariat and bourgeois, right? Being the laborer and the middle class or the upper class, intrinsic to capitalists and claiming that it is the capitalist that is at fault for the underachievements of the poor. This notion is powerful in being dynamic according to this article right here, intuitively persuasive because it is persuasive as you can see we're experiencing this in, uh, in American academia. This is being taught clandestinely and people aren't doing anything about it. The second stage to uh, ideological subversion is the destabilization. Destabilization of the economy, foreign relations, and defense systems. When you think about the fact that America is presently in a $28 trillion debt for the first time in history, and Democrats are presently throwing away trillions of dollars to construct these supposed uh, stimulus packages where 80% of the money goes to companies and corporations, you can understand where this debt is coming from. Also, we can look at the fact that Biden administration, like other administrations that are in favor of ideologically subverting Americans, is presently reshaping our relationship with Israel. Now, under Donald Trump, our relationship was awesome. Our relationship was great. Donald Trump declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Donald Trump um, encouraged a, a peace agreement between Israel and the United and the United Arab Emirates. So, if you notice, it is not America that is doing anything bad, but instead those that are on a turn-by-turn -turn basis put in power, and then through their administration, they enforce their agenda. The other aspect is border security, which is a part of national security. Our borders are deteriorated. They have open border policy. Biden is encouraging illegals to cross the border. Biden is uh, taking uh, billions of, uh, of dollars or millions of dollars away from COVID relief package in order to funnel it towards building more <coughs> shelters and more places in order to house people that are entering into the United States illegally. The third stage of ideological subversion is to create a crisis, violent change of power, violent change of structure, and a violent change of the economy. This all, remember, ideological subversion was launched in America in the 1920s. Every step of ideological subversion takes about uh, 20 years. So, not every step, every full cycle of ideological subversion takes 20 years because your child, it takes your child uh, around uh, 12 years to, to go from kindergarten to 12th grade, but they start off between the ages of five and six, then they take, let's say, two years of college, that's already 20 years of ideological indoctrination that they go through, and then there is a morale struggle between the upbringing and the conditioning, and this is where a lot of conflicts come from between the child and the parent. Now, when we look at the violent changes of power, even though uh, ideological subversion started in the 1920s, it wasn't until the 1960s when uh, these agents of ideological subversion created the sexual revolution, also known as the counterculture war of the 1960s. You guys can look it up under exactly that term. The counterculture war of the 1960s was just a war against the heterosexual family, against the nuclear family, against Victorianism, and against the codes of conduct associated with uh, conservatism and republicanism at that time. Now, because of that, this brought about a an ideological shift in conservatism because American conservatism then mutated from uh, policy-based conservatism to Judeo-Christian conservatism focused more on the nuclear family and God's natural law, which is why they then began to champion for less government began to champion for pro-life, began to champion for the pro-traditional family, 
began to champion for uh, not equality but egalitarianism. Now, the violent changes of power didn't only include a culture war against Victorianism and the nuclear family, but also a power, uh, a violent change of how the structure in society was going to be reflected. This, this also represents the rise of the Black Power movement in the 1960s through the Black Panther movement. Also, since then, the economy has also gone through violent changes. Why? Because of the false implementation of policies that are uh, that are not uh, in sync with the reality of how our society is structured. Now, the fourth and final stage of ideological subversion is the normalization, the period of stability until the next cycle reaches a crisis point or until they... Uh, renew the same cycle of ideological subversion to bring you even that much closer to their agenda and what it is that they want to see Americans reflecting. Normally, in today's day and age, millennials tend to believe that anybody that claims to be a patriot or anybody that claims to be a nationalist is a racist. And this comes from academic indoctrination. Let me tell you that when ideological subversion was implemented in America, it attacked America's four cornerstones. This being uh, academia, religion, cinema, and media. These are the four sources of information for any civilized society. So once you infiltrate these four information outlets and you're able to, through these four cornerstones, promote your own ideas of right and wrong, utilizing semantics, you can then implement active measure on a whole generation. Um, the normalization period comes when immediately after the outrage, let's say uh, transsexual men and women in the army. First it creates uproar, first it, it creates uh, protest, and then once the uproar and the protests and the grievances aren't heard, people surrender and then when the period of stability occurs where there is no longer any energy to continue contesting the decision made by legislation, they go ahead and push that same agenda a little bit further and now have uh, the academia and the school system teaching about uh, 1,001 gender orientations and such. This is why I believe that shorthand think and the shorthand think culture is a threat not only to America, but to conservatism. Because it is more easier for some people to practice the culture of right-wing populism or following anything that is popular, whether it is a popular political theme, whether it is a, uh, a popular commentator or a popular idea, than it is for them to be conservatives and exercise critical think. And... Distinguish the difference between the popular idea and how it conflicts with the tenets and the belief system of conservatism. This is my take. This is my opinion. Uh, feel free to like, share, and comment. Um, I want everybody to stay safe, stay informed, and God bless. Hey, yo, I love when cats think they're bigger than a sumo. That's when I hit them with a little Puerto Rican judo. Oh. You don't know what that is, that's when I say, you don't know who got this thing.